Hey there and welcome. My name is Carlos Berdes and let's start talking about what has been going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone here, unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. Some links, they may be affiliate links so that they can benefit me without costing you anything extra, and all the links, they will be in the description together with some timestamps so you can jump to the point of your preference. And after a longer than planned hiatus, we are back bringing some indie news to you. However, we are not digging into Zine Quest 4 this time around as it is mostly, if not exclusively, happening in Kickstarter, okay? So this episode, the first project that you want to talk about is Archival by Secession Cycles, a creator from RPG C, the Southeast Asian tabletop RPG scene. In Archival, you own a library and it is a recent thing. The game is for a heavy role-playing solo experience where you will be playing the owner of this library, coming with ideas and explanations for the consequences and what is happening of the game with limited or even no prompts at all. It is a very minimalist game and is currently available as pay what you want and you have even some accessibility options as well, which I always think that is a great thing that you can have these accessibility options from the get-go and not with some afterthought and all of that, okay? So check this minimalist game and if it's Striker Fancy, you can contribute to the creator as well. And by Captain, a creator from RPG Latam, the Latin American tabletop RPG scene, we have Witch. This solo game is inspired by the homonym movie by Robert Eggers. And another thing is that it is available in both English and Spanish. You play it with a deck of playing cards and plenty of dice. And in case you've watched the movie, it can provide you with some tips for the story as well. Also, I recommend you watching it as the movie is very good. So you can have like two in one, watch the movie because it's good and use the movie for playing the game as well. So, win-win. We also had the release of Forbidden Under the Crown of the King by Monkey's Paw Games. It is based on Tuno Goons from Natram and thus, as the own Natram said, it can be said that this is an award-winning tabletop RPG. On Forbidden Under the Crown of the King, some players will take on the part of the captain, and some players will be the swashbucklers. The captain presents a world of peril, challenges and plunder, while the swashbucklers seek out the plunder and peril and while you play, you will draw a small map of your pirate adventures up until you can present yourselves as the fiercest pirates in existence. Another release is The Ones You Carry With You by Row Flip Draw. In this solo game you create a character from scratch or you can even try and develop a previously created one or an idea that you had of a character the game is really a character creation game focusing on the traits and belonging that people acquire from different people and the environment around them like how each character or person is a uh, summation of the different things that are around them and how they then bring this character or this person up to what they are now. The idea of the game is to work with any kind of setting and to create a character in less than 30 minutes, only using a tarot deck, pen and paper, and that's it. It is available in the regular version and also as a plain text version for accessibility reasons, which, as I mentioned before, is always something that I enjoy because a lot of people can benefit from it and this shouldn't be an afterthought, it should be implemented from the get-go. Still on for a couple of days, we have a bundle that is the Slice of Life bundle. This bundle brings 10 games with stories that take part in the mundane daily events. Perhaps it won't be as mundane for everyone or when you are playing it, but they are traditionally mundane experiences with some twists. The bundle offers more than 50% off if you buy the games through the bundle and you have some amazing creators, including some creators from RPG Latam as well, like Cesar Capco that I know that is a part of it. 
And so you should check it out because it's a great value for your buck. And on gems, we have the one page gem 2022. And as the name implies, submissions need to be playable games in one page. And they need to be created specifically for the gem. So we cannot submit a game that was already created, but only if it's in one page. It will run until August 22nd. So we have something around a little less than a week, I would say, from the release of the video to try and submit to it if it was not expanded. I believe that it will be expanded at least. There are already hundreds of entries. And as always I mentioned, even if you do not submit to it, checking them out allow you to easily find some ideas or games or products for games as well that fit into some criteria that might strike your fancy. So it's really a good point of start to searching for different games that you want to try it out, like single page games for this one specifically. And another gem is the Zini Idea Generator 2.0 that just opened to submission. In it, you are supposed to, as the name suggests, try to ask the generator for a prompt and make something based on it. The submission, they should include the prompt that was created and in the description and must be a zine, as the name suggests, which is like being a zine is a flexible concept. It can changes, it can change actually from who you are asking about it, but they detail it better in the gem page so that you can be sure that you are inside the, their ideas of what, it, what consists in being a zine. The gem runs up until August 29 and is celebrating the upgrade of the Zini Idea Generator. So it's to use that generator, create a, have an idea and then develop it from that prompt and create a whole game or another project for tabletop RPG. Okay. A very interesting read for anyone wanting to create their own tabletop RPG is this so you want to create a TTRPG one by Diego Oldschool Nogueira, another creator from RPG Latam. Okay, this is an ongoing series, but this particular one, this particular thread is an interesting one where he talks about not trying to edit your te text right away when you are trying to create it, coming from with uh, the ideas and trying to develop from it. So it is true that everyone has their own process, but by constantly going back and trying to correct every typo, every wrong word that you type out or everything like that, you risk stifling your creativity and breaking your creative process and how you, your brain is trying to come up with new ideas. He goes in more details on the thread itself and you are taking the ideas and the suggestions from an any award winner and it might carry some more weight than just a random guy on YouTube like me. So if this is something that you want to do, if you want to create your own text or your own tabletop RPG products, check it out because this is a great way to try and go with this idea. And another important and informative thread is this one brought to you by World Champ Game Co, where they go into details on how their experience trying to crowdfund through GameFound was different than what they expected. GameFound first started as a pledge manager platform and now branched it into crowdfunding similar to what Kickstarter mainly is. Okay, we try to use other ones like each crowdfunding, but each was not developed for it. We are trying to just change how the way that platform goes. Kickstarter is a platform for that. However, it seems that crowdfund also poses some problems to creators, even more for tabletop RPG creators. And it's focusing perhaps more on how the other tabletop games, even more like board games work. So perhaps they are not the best, but I suggest you give a read on the thread uh, to see how the experience that for World Champ Game Co was with them. They had already great products before, and now they were already trying to bring more products from their releases. So it was not their first crowdfunding or their first tabletop project. So you know that this is someone with already some experience on the background on this area and how they could or couldn't navigate the ecosystem of GameFound. It's a great read. 
And for this week, I believe that's it. I was just returning. I hope that you like the video. If you like the video, like the damn video, share, subscribe. You know how internet works. You have the bell right now. You have comments. Let me know what you are like about the series, what you are disliking. If you missed the series, if you didn't miss at all, you can also let me know. I will try to respond to everyone that brings some question or some ideas. And I will see you all in my next video. So, see ya!